Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bayonets of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be talking about the Yugoslavian M48 Mauser Bayonet. Now, these are really cool, and I like them a lot. There's a lot of history to them, even though they're very common, and they're getting a little bit more expensive in recent years because of the popularity of the rifle itself, and everybody wants to have a bayonet. But I'm going to go through the history on here, and then we're going to take a look at this example, and then we'll conclude the video. So, this was adopted in 1948 to be used on the new, at that time, M48 Mauser rifle. It was an updated version of the M2447 and all that stuff. And with that, they wanted to take the longer M1924 bayonet that was used on those previous rifles, and they wanted to shorten it and kind of make it more streamlined and modern, for lack of better words. And uh, they also, if you haven't seen the M1924 bayonet, I have a video on that in this playlist, so go check that out. Um, anyway, so they, they took a lot of influence, I guess, from the the, uh, the German S8498, or the better known as the K98 bayonet from World War II, which was a shorter version of the earlier, you know, early 20th century longer bayonets. And um, Yugoslavia also used the S8498, another video I have on the S8498 that I have in my collection. It's Yugoslavian used. So um, yeah, you can go just go check out the whole playlist if you like bayonets as much as I do. So yeah, it's a shorter version of the uh, longer bayonet. Now, we kind of get to this. The markings on here, right, you can see that they're in Cyrillic. And they were in Cyrillic until about 1953. And then they switched the um, the actual text to the Western alphabet. I don't, I'm don't. i not exactly sure why. And it was marked uh, Preduzece, like in in um, Western phonetic, I guess, spelling. Um, I know I probably butchered the pronunciation. I'm not really good at Slavic languages, but I'm trying. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was pretty interesting that that was switched over to that in 1953. I'd, I'd like to find out why. If you know why, let me know. Um, I don't really have a good explanation for it. Anyway, I don't exactly know either when they stopped producing these. There's really no hard evidence that I've found of an exact year. Um, obviously, they started in 1970. They got the, uh, the AKM bayonet and all that stuff, so they were slowly phasing out the M48 rifle through all those years. But again, there's no definitive date or time when they actually stopped producing these. So the the Preduzeche means factory. Uh, 44 is just the number at that time that it was it was designated at. And it's the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm just going to say it in English. It's called the Red Flag Works, which is located in Serbia. Also can't pronounce the name of that city. Um, and is now known as Zastava Arms. So if you're familiar with that, that's why... Uh, these are all marked that that's been a, an arms factory for a very long time. So, um, yeah, just a little cool history isn't made at the same, same factory that the, uh, M48 rifles were actually made at. So, and a lot of the reworked K98s and 2447s were, where it came through that factory. So it's a, it's a really busy place. It still is today. I love Zastava uh, products. So we're going to get into kind of a little bit of the technical specs. So the blade right here, overall length is about nine, nine and three quarter inches or 9.75 inches. Um, I'm just going to go with inches because I'm a uh, um, dumb American and metric system kind of in millimeters gets overwhelming. Uh, it's, a, it's big numbers. And then the overall length is about 15 inches. So a little over a foot in length. It's pretty standard for a shorter bayonet. It's actually not that big. And you can see, you can definitely tell the influence of the, uh, the S8498, the German K98 bayonet is uh, definitely, definitely present here with the, the shape of the handle, the um, lug release and all that stuff. It's very, very similar. The other thing is that this one's actually got a locking ring on it. So the S8498 lacked the locking ring. There's some more markings right here. If you want to check that out. So, yeah, I'm loving the... I do love that marking. So this is a pre-1953 example. This one comes with the scabbard. The scabbard is just a typical, you know, steel scabbard, steel construction. The frog, actually, on the 1924 bayonet frogs, they had a longer belt loop, so it hung down a little, or, yeah, hung down a little farther. Uh, these ones were shortened up and made a little bit smaller, so that's pretty interesting. This particular example is actually matching numbers, too, if you want to check that out really quick. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, um, I actually got this a few years back because I had two M48 rifles at that point, and I'm just down to one, and it's a really... It's just a solidly built bayonet. It's nothing super special. And yeah, they're super expensive nowadays. Really glad I got a few of them back in the day because they were they were about 20 bucks. Now they're going for 80, 90 to 100 bucks, depending on condition. This would probably be a $100 example because it's got the, sorry, I was trying to put it back. It's got the frog, the, the, the bayonet, and the scabbard, and they're all matching. So that's a pretty cool thing. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching, everybody. I really am kind of happy to get this series going again. I haven't done a bayonet video in a couple years now, so I really like doing this. I love bayonets. I love bayonets, helmets, hats, and rifles, or guns in general, military surplus firearms. So I'm going to get back into this series. Nice little short video. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you consider becoming a supporter on my Patreon, if you like this content, uh, it's a dollar a month, 12 bucks a year, buys you in, and it helps support the channel. It allows me to get really cool bayonets like this. I've got a decent amount, but I'd like to get some more examples to make videos on that are a little bit harder to come by and educate people on what to look for. If you're at a pawn shop or flea market or what have you, and you come across something, now you should be able to identify a, a Yugoslavian M48 bayonet. So that's kind of the point of this series, and Patreon makes that possible. Support from viewers really is allowing me to get some really cool stuff recently. Anyway, so check that out. If you do five bucks a month or more on Patreon, you get access to my Discord server, which is really fun. There's a lot of people on there, and we, uh, we have some good, good chats. I get some ideas for videos. It's pretty interactive. I'm on there most of the time. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. Throw them down in the comments. And yeah, we'll see you on the next episode of Bayonets of the World.